Ever since 2019, there has been constant stirring over how much additional performance Golden Cove would bring to the table, with me confirming a 10 to 20% increase all the way back in late 2019. Now that information and many of my leaks since then have come from, of course, a handful of trusted sources connected to Intel that have proven themselves to be, well, incredibly reliable. I mean, heck, since then, we have seen info about Tiger Lake proven correct and confirmation of other things like Cypress Cove in Rocket Lake. But make no mistake that I have been cultivating more sources since 2019. The sources that I've had connected to Intel have connected me to more people. And most importantly, guests I've had on Broken Silicon are very well connected in the semiconductor industry. Some of them have connected me to people and they've connected me to people that have submitted information for months. One such source has gotten all of the information he submitted correct for the past six months and so now it is time to move forward with a video that centers on a source that hasn't been the center of a video before and it has to do specifically with alder lake u which of course is the lower power high uh volume you know around 15 watt chips that go into laptops but the information i've gained from this really allows us to draw some fairly large conclusions about alder lake overall including on desktop now, to set the stage for understanding what we're talking about with Golden Cove, let's remember what's happened since Skylake that launched in 2015 and is still basically the architecture that's in the current flagship Comet Lake products from Intel, right? Ice Lake brought an 18% improvement that was at least claimed by Intel over Skylake and Based on most info I've seen, including on Anantech, has proven to be correct. You know, Ice Lake brought an 18% IPC improvement over Skylake. Then came Willow Cove in Tiger Lake, which I conveyed would be around 5 to 10% increase in IPC. And that has been true in many applications, but then others, there's a bit of a regression. I'm just going to do some kind of averaging that I think gives Intel some benefit of the doubt while also using some of the more conservative, smaller numbers. Let's just say Tiger Lake was a 4% IPC increase over Ice Lake. Okay. So basically what I'm saying is Willow Cove is 23% better per clock, same core counts over Comet Lake. Right. And of course, since 2019, I've been saying Golden Cove will be 10 to 20 percent higher IPC. So that's 10 to 20 percent above the 23 percent that we already know Willow Cove is over Comet Lake. And there would also be a litany of different options and core counts. It would have big cores and little cores with the top one being eight plus eight, eight big cores, eight little cores. And the bottom ones likely being somewhere around six big cores. And there's, of course, also been dumps of information about how many different configurations will be possible with Alder Lake with us. Well, yeah, so there you go. You know the rumors that have been swirling. You know what I've said, what others have said. Let's get into the new information that I believe is really the missing puzzle pieces needed to confirm what's going on with both the desktop and mobile versions of Alder Lake. All right, now here we go. The update to Alder Lake from February 2021. I do recommend you watch a couple of my recent leaks if you really want to know the full picture on Alder Lake. There's a lot of interesting stuff like hyperthreading you can learn about. But I will do a quick refresher, as I often do, right at the beginning of this so you remember in the top of your head the key things that are to know about Alder Lake, which is, first of all, that it is the first big foray into big little foray flagship architecture from Intel. They, of course, have Lake Field, but that was really testing the water and really was mediocre at best when it launched. This is supposedly fully working Big Little, properly utilizing both big and little cores at the same time for maximum performance and to be used from top to bottom, mobile, desktop, and uh, the Golden Cove will go into Sapphire Rapids. Now, the top desktop SDI is eight big Golden Cove cores plus eight little Gracemont Atom cores. The top i9 will be 125 watts and have this eight plus eight configuration. And then, and this is somewhat new, I actually believe, but I, I have confirmation of this today. The i3 is likely six plus zero, meaning top i9, eight plus eight, bottom i3 is six cores, 12 threads, only big cores though, and the bottom and then i5s and i7s fill out the middle in between those configurations. And these will be on the LGA 1700 platform for desktop, which is planned to last for a few years, unlike basically everything Intel's made recently. 
Um, and this platform will have PCIe 5.0 support for the PCIe Time 16, and of course, probably Times 4 and whatever slots. But that M.2 NVMe devices will not have PCIe 5.0 that they use 4.0. Although, again, that really doesn't matter. PCIe 5.0 SSDs aren't even out yet. So I don't think that's going to matter this year. Maybe it could in a couple. And DDR5 and DDR4 are supported. Quarter 3, 2021 launch date. That is sounding more and more confirmed as of now. And then, well, let us get into some of this new information. Golden Cove has a 20% single-threaded uplift over Willow Cove. Of course, I've been saying to 10 to 20% IPC increase. I think we can now conclusively confirm that Golden Cove has IPC that is in the upper ends of those estimates. And this is from a source that is official materials from Intel. So this is not whispers. This is official. Additionally, Alder Lake U has double the multi-threaded performance of Tiger Lake U. Remember Tiger Lake U being about 15 watts and having four cores and eight threads. This is important information for what we're going to go through after this slide here. Now, I've also told that at this doubling of multi-threaded performance in the same TDP package, you know, you, Alder Lake U to Tiger Lake U, and this massive single-threaded performance uplift, it will be using 15% lower overall platform power at the same time. So it does sound like you'll get a bit more efficiency back for this performance increase, which is really good after seeing how power hungry some recent Intel products have been. And additionally, the little cores are around Skylake in performance. Remember, Gracemont isn't out yet, right? So this is interesting to me. This comes from another source that was cross-referencing the information with me. Around Skylake, think about that. Those Skylake level architecture Comet Lake 10 cores aren't going to look that impressive when they're Skylake level Atom cores in the background of most of the Alder Lake lineup. That is how old Skylake is, and that is how good, you might argue, the little cores will be. So yeah, I think this is quite exciting. This confirms that when I was always saying 10 to 20% higher IPC, Golden Cove to Willow Cove, well, now we know it's at the higher ends of that estimate, at least an overall single-threaded performance. Additionally, really that multi-threaded performance increase is the most interesting, right? We're talking about a direct comparison to a previous product at the same power usage, doubling multi-threaded performance. That's something that, considering it's big little, was always up in the air. And, well, this is definitely a bit above what I expected in multi-threaded performance increase. Or is it? Let's take this information and try to reverse engineer with the other info we already have to find out the overall picture of how Alder Lake conforms. And the first thing I'm going to do is try to confirm what the configuration of Alder Lake U or Alder Lake P is, right? Alder Lake P has been shown in several Intel Alder Lake leaks recently. And based on conversations with people that work at laptop OEM companies like, you know, HP or Dell or Lenovo, they say P is a new official suffix for the 28 watt class, right? H will be 35 watts and higher. U is around 15 watts or lower in U and P is 28 watts, right? But P and U should be using the same die. So when we look at this info dump here that I got from some leakers referenced by Tom's hardware, well, there's a bunch of different P's here. So which one is the top one? And I know what you're thinking. You're going, oh, well, it's going to be the best configuration in the P's. Well, not necessarily. I know Notebook Check has said that, but there were tons of Renoir leaks showing 12 compute units, 15 compute units that never got made. Just because there's engineering samples being tested doesn't mean that's what's going into the final product is that top engineering sample that was ever tested. So let's start looking into what this chip has to at least be. All right, so let's get to the math and I'll do it as quickly as possible to not bore you guys. But when I went to solve for what I believe the Alder Lake U configuration has to be, which this source didn't have the exact core configuration, I said, you know what? I find it highly unlikely Alder Lake U has less cores than Tiger Lake U and Tiger Lake U has four cores. So let's just assume six cores. All right, so that right there would be 50% more multi-threaded performance most likely, and then let's add 20% higher single threaded. So that's that's 80%. Oh, well, so that's not 100 though. 
Okay, well, then we need to also tack on the multi-threaded addition of those little atom cores. And based on what I am told, they will, like previous gens, be organized into quad core clusters. So basically, I am under the impression that this thing either has to be 6 plus 4 or 6 plus 8. But how much weaker is a Gracemont core than a Golden Cove core? Well, it's around Skylake IPC, so... Yeah, right there, it's about a third weaker than the Golden Cove core. Again, this is rough, so let's just go with rough numbers here. Um, and then it also doesn't have hyper-threading, so that's like another 20 to 30% lower. And you might say, okay, so it's, I don't know, right then? No hyper-threading, quite a bit lower IPC. Gracemont's probably half as good as a big core. Well, no, because it's also clocked a bit lower as well. I think the rough dart throw is about a third as good, which... Honestly makes sense with how Intel, as far as we know, is configuring these layouts, right? Remember that while it may be a third the performance, it takes up a fourth the room. And that's been covered in a bunch of other videos. So basically, they can fit four atom cores for every one gold of Cove core, but those atom cores are a third as good, but they also use less energy. It's basically maximizing performance per watt per area. Now, if the Golden Cove cores... I'm sorry, if the Gracemont cores were only half as good as Golden Cove, well, they take up a fourth the space. They probably just put dozens of those cores and try to make sure the communication between them is good. But that's not what they're doing. So I actually think that makes a lot of sense with how they're balancing it, you know, like 8 plus 8 or 6 plus 4, 6 plus 8. It's a bit better in performance per watt per area, but it's not magnitudes better, so you still want a healthy amount of the big cores. So let's just do that then. Basically, if we assume that each atom core is a third as good as one of the big Golden Cove cores, then we can say that adding one more quad core cluster would be a bit better than adding one more big core, and that, well, if six were 80% of the way there, adding one more... It's, it's not quite to doubling multi-threaded performance, and the math is rough. For all we know, the atom cores are a bit weaker than Skylake, so I'm going to err on the side of saying that, indeed, yes, this backs it up. The top configuration of Alder Lake P, and then definitely, since it would use the same die, Alder Lake U, is going to be six big cores and eight little cores, as Notebook Check said, and other people have been leaking recently. And so there you go. All of these leaks are starting to line up and make sense next to each other based on this new information I just received, right? Golden Cove should be about 20% better single-threaded, which means in the upper estimates of the IPC increase, probably around 17 to 18%, while also having a slight um, clock speed increase over Tiger Lake, and that combo gets you to the 20%. And then additionally, yep, those atom cores are about a third as good, and so that's how you get to double the multi-threaded performance over a quad-core Tiger Lake in the same power consumption package. And, well, we can now estimate how good we believe desktop Alder Lake will be. All right, so if there's eight big cores and they're, let's say, 20% better than Rocket Lake, roughly, let's just let's just do that. I know it's a bit worse than Willow Cove. Yeah, we get to about 10 cores in multi-threaded Rocket Lake performance. But then we add the eight little cores, multiply them by 0.33. Desktop Alder Lake, the top I-9 coming out in quarter three of this year with eight big cores and eight little cores should be around 12.5 Rocket Lake cores. And if you think about it, that means it should outright beat the 5900X based on the rumors we're hearing about comparisons to Zen 3 that they're about equal, but worse, efficiency. And that lines up with what I just conveyed in my other leak, that Intel believes they can probably outright beat the 5900X. The information is now becoming more and more concrete that indeed Alder Lake is the real deal. It is the gaming platform to get Late this year, if you've been waiting with an older system for a very long time, you know, either this or Zen 3 Plus, which, you know, Zen 3 Plus, if it's like what Zen Plus was over Zen 1, could be about at the same level as this. This is very exciting. And, again, for the love of God, do not buy Rocket Lake, which early leaked reviews are showing doesn't even beat Zen 3. It's just, well, using double the energy, and it just, just... I'd, I'd say wait for Alder Lake or Zen 3 Plus. You really don't have any other option right now anyways due to what's going on with demand. So, yeah, 
I think that's what I would advise people to do. And outside of that, that's going to just about do it for this video. Remember to subscribe to the Moore's Laws Dead YouTube channel and ring the bell button so you don't miss all the other leaks and opinion pieces and interviews coming out from this channel in 2021. And of course, if you have the extra money, please support us on Patreon. That is what puts food on the table for me, for our audio engineer, for Dan, the co-host of Broken Silicon. We really could not do this without our patrons, and we reward them every week with exclusive ad-free content. So come join us in that community. We're waiting for you. And of course, as always, thank you for watching. <laughs>